So this is really my favorite thing to do in data science. I mean, also dealing with data and the missing values, etc., is also fun. But really coming up with new features is basically that what it's all about. You know, you're trying to figure out, you're trying to use your common sense, you're trying to use your domain expertise, and you're trying to put some sense into it. You're like, okay, what can I use in this data that will make me make it make the model perform better? So it, it's really it's really cool. And yeah, I'm very happy to share with you what I um, thought of and what I came out with. So again, uh, first what I want to do is, you know, just to take a look back, what do we have here and how can I use these to come up with new features? I mean, that, that's kind of like a twofold process. First of all, what I do is look at what I have already and then try to extract some new information from there. And I also think about in, independently, how can, what can I bring from the outside that will be useful for me? So the first thing, uh, the first things first, what I want to do is copy it to a new data set that I will be mainly working on and keep the previous data set original and separate. So I don't mess with it. Okay. So I have transaction date. So that means that I can actually, I have month, day, hour also, I can actually come up with some new features here. So for example, I can come up with a transaction weekday, you know, right now I have the day of the month, but I don't really have a day of the week. So basically I can add the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday information there. What I can also do is to add, uh, the, a Boolean which is a zero or one uh, feature of if that certain day is a weekend or if it's a weekday. So I'll just do it with this. There are some really uh, nice and useful features of functions that you can use most of the time in Python. That's why everyone loves it too much, so much. Uh, yeah, and then this is how we do this one. On top of it, you can. I also thought that I can have the holiday calendar. So if it's a national holiday or not, you know, <clears throat> for example, 1st of January is a national holiday everywhere, I guess, in the world. Uh, so basically this is a, in New York, so I use the US federal holiday calendar. So most of the time, maybe you thought of this too, and then you were thinking, but wait a minute, how am I going to go and find all the national holidays and then mark them in my data? But most of the time in Python, that's why everyone loves Python this much. There are so many resources, so many libraries and so many things that you can already use that is built in or things that you can find online. You know, someone made a calendar for the US federal federal, federal holidays. So that's great. You just need to import it and it takes you what, like four or five lines of code and all of a sudden you have all the holidays marked in your data set. So that, I think that's awesome. And then, yeah, taking a look at what we added, we are saying this is the weekday, the first weekday, second weekday, etc. And then we also have a false, true or false. Uh, so it's called a Boolean, either zero or one of true or false of a weekend feature. We also have is holiday feature. So if it's a holiday, it's true. If it's not a holiday, it's false. So for example, first of uh, January, as I said, is a holiday. So we have it as true. And the, the reason that I thought of this is basically like, if it's a holiday, Maybe this is just maybe, right? This is my thinking. It's more likely that you go out with your family and families that if they don't want to take their cars inside a city like New York, they might prefer taking taxis, you know, then it's maybe more likely for someone to take a taxi that will raise the uh, or increase the average potential income of a taxi driver in a given region in a given hour. So, you know, these are just some tr small clues that I'm trying to give to the model saying that, you know, take a look at this one. This day is uh, also a weekend, but it's a little bit or a weekday, but it's a little bit different than other weekdays. So the next thing that I want to look at was uh, more a geographic sort of information. This was something that we had included also where I downloaded the data. It's a borrow information. Not sure if I'm like pronouncing that right, but I think that's how you pronounce it, borrow. I think it's kind of like a higher um, region. So like a borrow includes a couple of regions in it. And this information was included where I downloaded the data. So it's basically like it shows us which pickup location IDs or which location IDs correspond to which borrow. So I include that here and I'll quickly show you. 
what I have. So apparently this is pickup location one and it's a borrow called EWR. Let's see what type of boroughs we have. We have EWR, Satan Island, Unknown, which is, I guess, is a thing, uh, Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn, and Manhattan. So yeah, these are the different one, different ones that we have. There is a good distribution. I mean, you can see in Manhattan, it's th there are more data points, and for Brooklyn also, and Queens. But then you know, as you go down, like Staten Island, not so many. So that's also again one thing you can think of to uh, filter your data. For example, for now I'm going to keep it this way, but you know. Like if you remember in the previous videos, we talked about count of transactions and I was saying, well, if a place only has one transaction there, maybe in the future, if you want to filter it, you can actually think about uh, removing all the ones that have one transaction or two transactions, or you can, you know, you can come up with a limit for that. Same here, you know, you might say, well, actually, then I will, I only want to focus on Manhattan, Brooklyn and Queens, and I will not include the other ones. And I will say, okay, my model predicts the average income for a taxi driver in a given uh, hour in these three boroughs. And yeah, and that, that's all we could do with these guys. For now, as I said, I'll keep it this way. And then, yeah, I, you know, we, we'll see how we perform and then we can come back and filter those later as we want. But I mean, it's very likely that the performance will be higher, performance will increase when you have only the first three of them, for example, Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens, because then you know you have more information for one region rather than having like only 300 for Staten Island, which is which makes it very likely that we will not get a very good score for Staten Island in general. I will not look into it, but um, it is likely that that will be the case.